So let us now move on to the practical realization of Norton's theorem. So like the last time our initial step would be to determine as to what resistances are we using. Then we will move on to constructing this circuit onto the breadboard. So I have already calculated as to what resistances we are using. So R1 comes out to be 503 ohm, R2 comes out to be 148 ohm and R3 comes out to be 149 ohms and RL comes out to be 235 ohms. Alright. Although color coding of R2 and R3 are same but when I measured it with the help of multimeter there was a slight difference in the reading and which is acceptable due to tolerance limits all right so what i have taken here is i have taken the values of resistance which have been measured or which have been given to me by the multimeter itself rather than calculating it with the help of color coding. let us now move on to our step number one so if you remember Thevenin's theorem, the same procedure we are going to follow in Norton's theorem as well. So step number would, one would be evaluation of this load current in your given or complex circuit. So this is, let us assume that this is your given circuit. This is your given circuit, DC circuit and this is a complex DC circuit. So this complex circuit will be converted into a simpler circuit which will be known as your Norton's equivalent circuit which we will see in the later stage. So our primary aim here is to find out IL in case of your complex network and again finding out IL in case of Thevenin's equivalent network and comparing both these values if they come out to be same then we will say that Norton's theorem has been verified all right so for measurement of IL in the complex network let us proceed step by step okay so this is your observation table first column here as previous experiment is always is VDC or you can say V as meaning as to how much source we are providing to the circuit let us check as to how much source we are providing to the circuit by measuring it with the help of multimeter so i have connected the multimeter in this manner you can also see it in the diagram positive end of the multimeter is going where my positive end of supply is and negative end of multimeter is connected where the negative supply of this project board is connected. So I can see that my supply here is approximately 10 volts. So I will mention that I am providing it with approximately 10 volts of voltage. So still our step number one is incomplete. Our step number one initially was to calculate load current or you can say calculate the current flowing through this resistance which is RL and for doing so what I have done here is I have inserted a ammeter in series with these two resistances. All right. So you can see what I have done is I have isolated this terminal and this terminal and inserted a ammeter in between so that the current which is coming from here passes through the ammeter giving us the reading of IEL. So this circuit has been drawn in this manner and after turning on the supply I can see that this value comes out to be 4.48 milliamperes. Alright, so I'll 
mention here under IL column and keep in mind that this IL is the IL in your complex network alright so this comes out to be 4.48 milli ampere so the next value to be filled is next parameter to be filled is RL which we have initially calculated which came out to be 235 ohm right the last resistance in the diagram is RL which is 235 ohm so we have written its value let us now move on to our step number 2 fine so we can here say that this theorem is a dual of Thevenin's theorem so in previous case under Thevenin's theorem what was step number 2 step number 2 was finding out the value of VTH alright but in this case we need to find out the short circuit current so if I define my step number 2 step number 2 will be finding out the short circuit current through terminals AB when the load has been short circuited meaning that I'll connect rather than connecting a voltmeter now I'll be connecting a, a meter via terminals A and B and finding out my short circuit current or I can say IN which is not its current ok so let us go to the breadboard and what I have done here is I have removed my resistance R earlier there was a resistance connected here but what I have done here is for calculation of ISC what I have done is I have removed R4 or you can say RL and now I need to connect a meter across these terminals to measure current ISC so switching on the power supply and I have already connected the a meter as shown in diagram so I am getting ISC approximately 8.33 milli amperes all right moving ahead on to our step number three step number three is measurement of Rn so if you look closely the procedure for measurement of Rn is similar to what we did to calculate RTH alright in the same manner what we are going to do is firstly we are going to remove resistance RL and then we are going to replace the sources in the circuit with their corresponding internal resistances so what we have done here is we have short circuited this portion alright and what we can do is either we can calculate it with the help of series parallel combination you can clearly see that R1 and R3 are in parallel with each other and their combination is in series with R2 meaning that resistance 503 ohm and resistance 149 ohm are parallel in, with each other and their combination will be in series with 148 ohm all right or alternatively what we can do is we can just simply connect a multimeter here in the resistance mode and it will give us the value of a resistance so what I have done here is I have connected my terminals of my multimeter and switched the knob to the resistance value and clearly I am getting a value here which is approximately 263 ohms alright so my RN comes out to be 263 ohms you can verify that with the help of series parallel combination moving on to our fourth and most crucial step which is evaluation of load current in the Norton's equivalent circuit so here we have our Norton's equivalent circuit which comprises of a current source which is IN or ISC which we calculated around 
milliampere and we have one resistance in parallel with it which is Rn which came out to be 263 ohm in the previous step and we have RL from the initial steps which was already 235 ohm all right so if this il comes out to be equivalent to the load current in our first circuit then we will clearly say that if we replace that complex circuit with this equivalent circuit the current remains same meaning that norton's theorem is valid all right so let us calculate il IL can be easily calculated by division of current which is ISC into opposite arm resistance divided by RN plus RL. So ISC was approximately 8.33 milliamperes into 263 divided by 263 plus 235. So this will come out to be approximately 4.39 milli amperes all right so taking this value onto our observation table we'll see that it comes out to be 4.39 milli ampere now comparing this with the previous value of il so these values are equivalent to each other meaning that this IL which was taken from your complex network and this IL which was taken from your equivalent circuit are equal to each other meaning that your Norton's theorem has been verified for our given circuit okay so in similar manner you can take some more readings by varying your voltage source or what else you can do is you can also change your resistances meaning you can take different values of r1 r2 r3 and rl fine